co-ops have been around. But what you're doing is structurally quite different. It's really what, industrial size? That's exactly right. There, you know, um, as Americans, we tend to think of a co-op as often a food co-op. That's the thing we're familiar with. It smells like patchouli and it's kind of hippie. In fact, over 120 million Americans belong to different kinds of co-ops. There are producer co-ops, there are consumer co-ops, and then there's another type called worker co-ops. And this and is that's what you're doing. That's exactly right. Is there a chance that this is bigger than the three co-ops that you're working on? Uh, first of all, three co-ops employing 150 turn of people does not get at the heart of the problem. You have to reach a certain scale. So the challenge is, can we create a network of 75, 100 companies, each of which are employed 50, 60, 70 people? Many cities have populations of people locked in the inner city who are locked in generational poverty. You know, generation after generation, they simply can't get out. The strategy here is to find a way to tap into the big budgets of some of the major institutions in the city. The big three anchors in Cleveland, the clinic, university hospitals, and Case Western, together purchase over $3 billion of goods and services, and very little of that currently is, is sourced locally. They're the legacy of the manufacturing strength of Cleveland a few decades ago, or 50 years ago, and they're the kind of businesses that don't get up and move. The co-ops are pressing these institutions to shift business toward them so the money turns into local inner-city jobs. 